3D printing offers a lot to engineers. It's kind of a new technology that we're trying to take advantage of. The first time that we went and saw the 3D printers, I was amazed at the technology that we had. I had never seen anything like it. I had spent uh, a lot of time working on getting 3D objects into the machine, and so I was interested for a long time in getting something back out of the machine. A lot of times engineers are called upon to try to distill a design into something that someone who doesn't have an engineering background can see. For example, let's say um, a project that some of my students are working on, they're developing a new cell phone holder. Uh, so if you're going to a company and you're trying to show them your design, it certainly is nice to have uh, something three-dimensional that people can touch and feel and see what their product is going to look like. It makes it a little bit more real to them. When I saw what we were going to be expected to do in this class, I thought, wow, I didn't even think of make them having this kind of technology, especially for a lower level class. Us getting the opportunity to actually work with this technology was really good because it does help you to better visualize. The nice thing about 3D printing is it really offers students the ability to take something they've seen that's two-dimensional in nature. For example, a drawing they may have done on the computer in a computer-aided drawing software. They can then, although they can see this on a computer um, in a 3D rendition that they can twirl and spin, it's not really until they hold it in their hand that they really understand what it looks like in 3D. The real benefit of this was to have the tangible model in my hand that I could look at, I could take the phone, I could stick it in, and I could determine whether or not I was meeting the criteria that I wanted to meet. It really enhances the flavor of your design by allowing you to actually feel it in your hands as opposed to view it on a screen. The Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology, ABET, who accredits our engineering program, is also very interested in design realization and how students actually take something from uh, proposal stage to initial development and actually produce a product. And this really allows them, this type of printing allows them to realize that kind of product. And we weren't really aware at the time, I don't think, the connection this would have with art. Um, it was really interesting t once we got this on board, we had some folks from art, from visual arts who came over and said, you know, this is really neat, how can we do it? And they were able to go to their computers, produce something that an engineer probably would not have produced because it was very creative. And they were able to produce that, take the drawings over, put them on the rapid prototyper and develop something organic in nature and very creative in nature that um, was really interesting to visualize when you were able to hold it in your hand. Um, my, my approach to the technology of, of rapid prototyping is sort of a playful one. Uh, obviously, originally the intention of the technology was to produce pieces that could be f uh, tested for manufacturing and, and that sort of thing, but um, I'm more interested in it from a fine arts point of view of, of actually producing a sculptural piece. Um, I work a lot in 3D in the computer and it's a, it's a completely different experience from printing a piece out on paper to be able to create a 3D representation of it that you can actually hold in your hand and move around. It's a very different sort of experience. Um, this piece, which is called Warp Cube, tends to elicit the most positive responses of the pieces that, that uh, I've shown people. And I think it's because it's, it's very um, complex seeming, even though it's, it's a really very simple form. Um, it's, a, it's simply a lattice that's been twisted and expanded in the center so that the, the very center of it is actually a void. But it is a bit confusing to look at because it appears to be a cube uh, from some angles and it appears to be sort of round or spherical from others. And that and the sort of regular repetition of the, of the internal cells makes it you know, sort of very visually interesting. It's also one of the pieces that I think really shows off the capability of the 3D printing because it would be virtually impossible to create an object of this lightness and this, this airiness um, with any other method. Because I use a sort of radial symmetry on more than one axis, the forms wind up looking very organic, like something like diatoms or radial area. So uh, they have this sort of uh, sea creature look 
I think partially because of the symmetry and partially because of the smoothing process after the rough polygon cage is worked out, the conservation of the mass through the smoothing is very much like a creature might uh, undergo when, when growing their own shell. So there's a sort of organic basis even to the, to the form. I think the connection that's being made between art here um, and engineering is really a unique connection and hopefully it will lead to more collaboration so that maybe our engineers can design something that's a little bit more creative and a little bit more unique in nature. I would really, uh, in, in, in sort of augmenting these things with some, some extra capabilities sort of so they could be in the world and be more alive, I'd really like to get the robotics department uh, and engineering involved in this. It will be interesting to see if the collaboration with art will then turn into something where perhaps there will be a member of the art department on a design team to provide some aesthetic quality to a design that people might produce. I think UMBC is a particularly uh, fertile place now for the, the sort of uh, juncture of technology and the arts. The art program here has a sort of technological leaning anyway. Um, compared to a lot of fine arts programs, but it seems that just recently that there's a lot of cooperation starting to happen between departments, and I think that can only be beneficial to everybody.